Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about the singleton pattern. So this is a pattern when you um, create a class that can only have one instance created. And um, you typically create the instance within the type and make it so that the user code cannot create instances. So you create the instance yourself and expose it globally and then lock up the uh, the instance creating mechanism for whatever language it is. In our case, it's the constructor. Um, so this settings class is the only example that I can think of that would require or is appropriate to implement a singleton. Um, so we've actually got the default or the built-in application settings base um, class here that seems to implement a singleton. So we can go into application settings base you'll see that all of the constructors are locked up they're protected so you can't really create an instance of it um, in user code and then when you go to the settings base thing itself um, hold on the the singleton is actually created in this code here in this automatically generated type for your application. And here's the singleton. It's the only instance, it's called default. You can call it default or instance, those are common names. And it's static and read only. So a friend of mine did the same thing with his settings based class. And I find this a lot, I use this a lot now just cause you have much more control over what's happening and uh, just I like it a lot more when it comes to like a serious project um, hold on I'm gonna uh, find an example of its implementation all right so here's what my settings are the reason this um, has to be a singleton is because I have to create an instance of this so that I can serialize this type um, it has to be an instance or non static class so, so it's serializable and you would only want one of these in an application because it's this class represents the settings for the entire application so you would only want one and another thing about a singleton it allows you to do uh, derivation you cannot do this with a static class you cannot derive from a static class so that's what allows you to do and and uh, we, we need derivation for the settings class because it um, abstracts it abstracts you from the complexities of the base class. So we don't need to deal with anything other than providing uh, the failure mechanism, what to do when it fails, the reset th uh, thing, and the property. So that's all we need to concern ourselves with, with um, when implementing the settings base class. We don't need to do, deal with all this stuff. That's what derivation allows us to do. And that's uh, pretty well it. All you have to do for settings base, or sorry, singleton, is uh, lock up all of your constructors so that they are not public. So typically you would make them protected. And then you would create a static member that is read only. And this can be a field or property or whatever um, whatever you feel like making it and that instance is going to be of the type that it's going to be of the containing class type so it's going to be itself um, and that's the only instance that can be created anyways that's a bit about the singleton pattern why you would want to use it see you next video